you today as we're getting ready to check if we can match the choir and orchestra we will sing we will sing from cgs number 10 while we are trying to do that we want to appreciate the choir and orchestra already for the rendition that they've just given to us um first um, musical heavenly sunlight they've followed by a beautiful light I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you that might be watching us over the internet and say, may the Lord bless you. Amen. And this is the Apostolic Faith Mission. Our, our contact details are on the website that you may be watching. Just in case you want to get in touch with us for anything, please use the uh, contact details there. We're just starting our devotional service now. Feel free to come and join with us if you live close by. But if not so, we implore you to start with us again after this session. We will have the evening session at 5 p.m. So um, let's sing together to praise the Lord, starting with CJ's number 10, and Brother Mike Wallaby is our song leader.
Let's sing forward our take number 512. 512. 512. In the hour of trial, Jesus, pray for me. Amen. Lest by base denier I depart from thee. May God pray for us. Amen. We're listening to the tune from the organist, and we heartily sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4, and 4 sitting down after the tune from the organist. Furthermore, we shall sing number 511. 511. 511. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. May the Lord God help us Amen. throughout this new week that we will not yield to any temptation. Amen. We shall listen to the tune from the organist, and then we will sing verses 1 and 3. Verses 1 and 3, sitting down after the tune.
Let's take a chorus. God is here and that to bless us. Amen. Let's take chorus at number 32, 32. We want to take that one just um, twice. Chorus number 32. I am ready for service for thee, dear Lord. Here am I. Amen. Send me. Amen. Now let's see today they taught us about uh, submission and willful service. May God help us to be able to volunteer Amen. so that God can use us. Amen. And we want to do the prayer in singing. We want to sing in prayer that here we are. May God send us Amen. for the willing service. We will take this twice after the organist team. Song before prayer is going to be five one five. Five hundred and fifteen. Five one five. We are taking verses one and four. Standing up. Verses one and four. Standing up. Um, and we will remain standing at the end of the fourth verse to be led in prayer. This one will listen to the tune from the orchestra. Five, one, five. Five hundred and fifteen. Yeah. 
we pray. Oh Lord God, your Almighty Father. Amen. Oh Lord God, the Mighty One. Amen. Oh Lord God, God of order. Amen. God of orderliness. Amen. Oh Lord God, I set up the tabernacle Amen. in the wilderness Amen. for the people of God to realize order is important. Amen. Oh Lord God, I made the demarcation between the altar called the holy place and the holy of holies. So that today we can realize that there's a separation and a difference when we are saved, when we are sanctified, and when we receive the baptism. Oh Lord God, God of the ages past. Oh Lord God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Oh Lord God of Abraham. God of Isaac, yeah. God of Jacob, yeah. God that made promise and they bring it to pass. Yeah. We praise your name. Yeah. You give us privilege yeah. to understand all this lesson. Yeah. And for a while now, we have been having this wonderful lesson. God of heaven. It is one thing for the teacher to, to, for the teacher to teach. And it's another thing for us, the student, to understand yeah. all this wonderful lesson. Heavenly Father, plant it in our heart. Yeah. The spirit of understanding, give it to us. Amen. We do not want to learn it as a usual, normal routine. No. But we want to learn it because we want it to be applicable to our life. Amen. Therefore, Lord, plant it in our heart. Amen. Water the seed Amen. and let it germinate Amen. so that in our midst we'll be receiving salvation, Amen. we'll be receiving sanctification. Amen. And when there is sanctification, there will be orderliness. Yeah. There will be spirit of accordance. Yeah. There will be agreement. Yeah. There will be free service. Yeah. And we'll be able to serve you the more. Yeah. Lord, grant our request. Yeah. There have been series of evangelism going around. Some group went to the Dublin Island recently. And we even have our dears, uh, Brother Isaac Adigun, and our one of our elder, Brother Isaac Shodikwe. They are all in West Midland. Evangelizing. Oh God, put them up. Yeah. Let Jesus back them up. All this ministry of evangelism in UK, outside UK, and worldwide. Lord, back it up. Lord Jesus, back it up. Water it. Let it germinate. Let it bring forth good fruits, good products. Product of salvation. Product of sanctification. Product of baptism of Holy Ghost. Product of divine anointing. Product of the presence of God in our life. The pillar of cloud. Let it descend into our midst. So that this day be the first day of another week. Make it a week of blessing. A special blessing. For those who have been sick to be healed. For those who are in trouble to be delivered. For those who are in need to be blessed. For the joy of this church to be full. And for the gospel to spread worldwide. In the name of God the Father. And God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. We have prayed in Jesus name.
from the book of Job, chapter 2, read through verse 3 to 10. Job, chapter 2, beginning from verse 3 to verse 10. Verse 3, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschews evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Five. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a portrait to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still return thine integrity? Curse God and die. We will stand on the last. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. I don't know. I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine For its cars may tend to gray I don't worry all the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead Lord is silver lined. 
the sun is always shining, then no tear will dim the eye at the ending of the rainbow where the mountains touch the sky. Many things about I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. I don't know about tomorrow, it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame of light, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood so many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I I just want to thank God for being here again. Um, um, a couple of years ago, I um, came to this country in 1999. I would say came back to this country in 1999. And this was the place where God met me. Amen. So it really feels good to be here. And anytime I'm here, I really feel blessed. Amen. And um, to start with the word of God. It's part of what we read in Job chapter 2, and I'm going to take this from verse 3. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and extrueth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. But the point where I'm going is this. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. The simple title of the sermon for this morning is... I have prayed for you. Amen. I want you to tell the person sitting closest to you that Jesus has prayed for you. I, I, I really need you to tell the nearest person to you that Jesus has prayed 
for you. You've got to be able to tell the nearest person to you that Jesus has prayed for you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our high priest. Amen. The priest of this world, they did their best when God gave them the opportunity to show the Israelites shadows of the substance to come. But all these things were pointing to one fellow, one person, Jesus Christ, our great high priest. Amen. He is the one who has passed through the holy place into the holy of holies. But in reality, he has passed from the earth to the heavenly tabernacle. Amen. This is the person who has the audacity yes. and authority yes. that when he says he has prayed for you, yes. you better believe him. Yes. Because when he touches you and keeps you in the hollow of his hand, though the devil strikes hard, the Bible says they struck hard at Joseph. But they said his hands were made strong by the power of the Almighty. The devil will shoot sore at you to wound you. But when you are covered by God, nothing on this world. This is the standard. Nothing on this world. In the heavens, on the earth, below, you are safe. I want you to be rest assured. This is what makes you chill. I have prayed for you. I don't know what you are going through. But I don't need you to give me any analysis. Because you know why? Every family, this is the truth, is going through a silent storm. I, look, my family is going through a silent storm. The thing about it is that some people's one is obvious. It's glaring. So you can see it. So everybody can check you. I think those ones are even better. Because we know where to target our prayers. Oh, pray for sister so, 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 and so. Pray for brother so, 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 and so. Because look at it, look at it. It is visible. But for some of us, the storm is so silent that as you are passing through this journey to heaven, I listened to a lady, she said something, I put the quote on my wall, on my Facebook wall, it says that not everybody needs to know about your vulnerability, because not everyone can handle your pain. Not everybody can handle your pain. Don't go around telling everybody every single thing, go to Jesus! Go to Jesus! is the man who has been touched by all our infirmities yet without sin yet he qualifies second to none to take every problem you have nip it in the bud even before it co it's coming are you with me every problem that God has allowed in your life it had to pass through what we call an examination yeah. by Jesus yes Nothing has come to you without regulation. Be rest assured. This is what keeps us in the gospel. If it was not like this, and that the devil could sift past God and get us, we are in trouble. We would be in trouble. But everything comes under God's scrutiny. He's checking it, checking you, checking it, checking you. Should we? Should can you imagine what happened to Job? The Bible says he kept his integrity full, no sin. Yet the enemy of our soul desired to move God against him. Don't be afraid. Amen? Amen. Don't be afraid. Look, even young ones the devil can see your future 
So he begins to attack the home you are growing in. It's a scheme, strategy. Don't give up. Some of you small ones today listening to this, you may not understand. But because the Lord God Almighty has a future for you, he will attack your parents and you, your parents will have problems. Silent problems that until you are old enough to understand, you will not know much about it. But the real target is you. For the devil to get any one of us, he won't come directly. He will go round, 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 round. But the real target is you, is me. May God deliver us. Amen. 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 Listen to the first assault of Satan on Job. Listen. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And who was there also? Satan. And Satan came also among them. So don't be worried. Don't start looking. Because the thing about it is that he is not here in bodily form. He is here in spirit. And may God guide your spirit. Because it is illegal for spirits to live upon the earth. God is a spirit. For God to live upon the earth, he must inhabit a human being. For the devil to come upon the earth, he must also inhabit a human being. Because they are spirits. So he's going around, looking, checking. Is it empty? Is that one empty? Can I use this one? Is this one prayed enough? Can I use this? Can I, can I, can I, can I? He's checking. If somebody that was clean, as pure as snow, was a, what was a, what was a, a target of attack, how much more? Are you with me? Yes. Let's go on. Seven. And the Lord, so, you know, I like Jesus. Even before the devil could continue, God has intercepted. Amen. So he came in, but God has intercepted because God knows the end from the beginning. Yes. I have been opportuned recently to work with some film directors. And the only thing I like about them is that they can start the film from anywhere because they know the whole script. You want to do a four-minute film, they can say, let's start from the middle. Some of them say, let's start from the end. Because they know the whole film. The way they record it does not matter. Because they are going to edit it. God knows the whole film of your life. Yeah. From A to B, from Alpha to Omega, from A to Z. From the day you will be born to the day you will die. God knows the whole story. Yeah. Doesn't that give you a relaxation? Yes, that nothing has passed God by... Oh, well, well, how did that happen? Yeah. No. Everything was under check. Yes. God has seen... This gives me and you the rest assurance that, wow, we are in the right place. Amen. The story of my life has been written. Amen. Isn't it sweet to know that every step, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? Yes. He will be moving from light to light, light to light, light to light, brighter, brighter as the day comes by. Mark the perfect man. For the end of that man is peace. You got to like God. You got to love God. You got to be excited about God. Some people they come to church and uh, they, 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 it's time to sing and just to praise God. They can't praise God. It's not merely my personality. I don't really like. I don't know. I just don't feel. And then you take that same person to the Emirates Stadium, and their team has scored a goal. And then you see that. Ah, yes. And they are clapping. And they are singing. And you wonder. These people will perish. Just 11 people kicking a ball. And the savior of your soul. Who has the power of life and death. Does not excite you. Who gave you life. Who gave you breath. Who gave you substance. 
substance you are walking, you are talking today by the order of the Almighty. That if he decides to go to sniff you back, you are a dead person. And everybody here will be irritated and say, quick, 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 quick to the mortuary. You've got to be excited about God. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Some people they say, Are you crazy? I might have been crazy, but if God can keep me alive. After losing my elder brother at the age of 16, losing my, my father at the age of 17, my mom committing suicide at the age of 18, and it can keep me sane up till today that those cycles and effects of negativity have no planting in me, I will be excited. I don't know about you, but I want you to take God in a separate new way. That as we are studying about this tabernacle, don't focus on the items, focus on Jesus. Because you know what? He is the only person who can order your life. You know, Brother Mike was talking about order. Everything was orderly. And some of us, we find ourselves in a mess. But the God of order, He will order your life. All the confusion is a trick. It is a trick because God is not the author of confusion. No. But sometimes in our lives, there will be a permitting for us to be sprayed with what I call dust on the way. That we can't really see where we are going. The dust will also be sprayed at the back. We can't return. Dust will be on the left and the right. We don't know where to go. So you're just going in circles. No progress. You know this thing I'm doing now? I'm not going anywhere. That can happen in our spiritual lives. You don't get it again. This is utter confusion. You are praying, it's brass. You are fasting, it's brass. What is brass? Judgment. You're supposed to get breakthrough, yet you are still feeling guilty. What did I do wrong? Remember the man we are talking about did not do anything wrong. No. Yet, I am telling you, because he was human, he'll be searching himself. Mm. And, <laughs> and you know the devil is a trickster. Yeah. It's at that time he will say, it is one thing you did when you were this. It's one thing you did when you were that. Don't listen. No. Don't listen. No. Whether you did it or you did not do it, Jesus Christ took that sin on the cross. Yeah. And high priest, oh, yes, yes. you've got to be bold about this. Yes, yes. So you you approach the throne of grace with boldness. Yes. Anytime the altar call comes, this is your territory. Oh, yes. Commit your life to Him, because whether you commit it to Him or you don't commit it to Him, you are under attack. The day you got saved, that's the day war began. Amen. The day you got saved, war was declared. High target list. This guy must come down. That is the slaughtering deal the enemy put towards every saved soul. He must come down. But you will not. By the special grace of God. If God could do it to Job, he would do it for you. Job chapter 2 verse 8 or 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Satan has to reply. Oh. You think God did not know where he was coming from? But he has to answer to the Almighty. So he says, um, um, I can imagine him stammering um, because he's talking to the Almighty. You can't talk to the Almighty and just say, I was coming. Who are you? This, he's saying this, and the Lord said unto Satan, he said, then Satan has said, um, from, from go, 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 going to and fro on the earth and, and, and walking up and down. So he's a busybody. Mm. Just going around, scattering things, destroying things, never at rest. Yeah. God will deliver us. Yeah. He goes on to eight, and he said, and the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright one, man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. <laughs> then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, does, does Job fear God for naught? That, that means that there must be a reason why he fears you. you. He can't just be fearing you. He gets jealous. Mm. 
Anytime he sees a Christian fervent, he gets jealous, he gets wound up, he gets irritated, he gets furious. So he begins to bring up a case here. Mm -mm, there's a reason. It can't just be natural like that. He can't just love you. So he goes forward. Eh, there are things you have done. Eh, I've been trying. I've been trying. Ten. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house? You see why God is protecting you? You see why God is protecting you? You see how God is protecting you? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You've been looking. That's why we need to be thankful in all things. You don't know. So he, God had put a hedge about him. So as he's walking, there's a hedge. Remember, this thing is not seen. It's not seen with the physical eyes. This is a spiritual hedge. Don't touch my anointed. It's, it's a simple instruction. Don't touch my anointed. Don't fool about with my kids. If you touch them, I will deal with you. That is the father we've got. I want you to be rest assured. The next one comes in. He says, and about his house. You wonder why things are still in order. You wonder why you are still living in that house. It's a miracle and a mystery. Yeah. You think it's by the work you are doing, the mortgage you are praying. You think it's that is that that's what kept the property with there. No. You think your children are you go to school every day, come back healthy. You don't know what is happening in the spiritual. You have no clue. The hedge is there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. It's circling. Yeah. It's the ball of fire. Yeah. But listen to this. And all that he had, not only his house, even his cows, even his property, everything that Job owned, it was covered by this hedge. Because we see, and all about that he had on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Look at these accusations the devil is bringing up. He says, and his substance is increased in the land. These are the reasons why he's serving you. He's serving you because you blocked everywhere. I cannot attack him. His property is increasing. Everything that he has is being blessed. Let us remove the hedge. So 11, he says, put forth thine hand now. You know what I like about this? He says, put, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had. The devil is telling God to do evil. But God doesn't do evil. No. So listen to the response. And he will curse thee to thy face. 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, I don't do evil, but I've prayed for this guy. Amen. This man that you are worried about, that you really want to frustrate, okay, this is what you're going to do. He gives him the authority. This is the secret. Don't think that Anything happening to you has not been allowed by God. If you are truly his child, like we said before, it has gone under check. And so God says in 12, behold, all that he has is in thy power. What a dangerous situation. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's why you're going through that heat now. Maybe God just allowed a tiny little opening. Say, devil. Okay, do your best. But I've prayed, Amen. I've prayed, Amen. I've prayed. Amen. And then look at what he says. He says here, look, so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You can imagine him. It's like the, the speed at which he will leave God's presence. Ready to utter or destroy or damage to the uttermost. But God kept his own. Amen. God will keep you. Amen. He will keep your family. Amen. He will keep your property. Amen. And when it's time for the trumpet to sound, when the final sieve will take place, and the sieve will be so, so shaky that only the remnants who are filled with the Spirit of God will be taken up, you will be there. Amen. I will be there. Amen. You will be there. Amen. I will be there. Amen. But I want you to know one thing. Through my little experience on this road, there is one thing the devil likes in our lives. And we will see this in another character. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. Let's see this one. Luke chapter 22. Let's get this right. 
Verse 31. Let's see this one. It, it, it probably makes sense. What the devil is really after. And God will help you to guide yours jealously. Luke chapter 22 verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon. Simon. Whenever God is talking twice, be careful. I will show you some instances where he, he speaks twice. Just hold that place. Let's go to Genesis 22, 11. Genesis 22, 11. Just hold that place. Genesis 22, 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Why twice? Why twice? Simon, Simon. Let's check another one where it was called twice. Let's go to 1 Samuel 3, 10. 1 Samuel 3, 10. 1 Samuel 3, verse 10. Look at this one. First Samuel 3, verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel! Samuel! Why two times? Sometimes it will be that Jesus wants to say something. Let's go to John chapter 5. Let's go to John chapter 5, verse 24. He wants to say something important. He said, verily, verily. Whenever God is saying something twice, you know how our parents will do? Banj. Banj. You know, I, I think of some of you, you know, correct Nigerian parents. Some of them don't even need to talk. But it's when you don't hear or see the eyes that bang. If you are a human being with blood in your veins, you will adjust. Yes. Yes. There's something you know, yes. this is calling you to order. Yeah. Yeah. That is the same thing Jesus, our grandparent, was addressing Peter. He said, Simon! <laughs> Simon! <laughs> Simon, behold, oh. Behold, see, it's a revelation. Sometimes God will give you a revelation. Don't go around chatting, chatting, chatting. That is the time to start praying. God can give you revelation of what is going to happen, unfold, unfold, unfold in your life. In every, that, uh, uh, I saw this. Okay, 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 okay. You spoil everything. That is the time to start praying. Behold, God will just open you. Sometimes you'll be sleeping. Go, just open, open your roof. You will just see things clearly. It will make sense. That's the time to be praying. That's the time to be praying. He said, behold, Satan has desire to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. Hey, the one thing the devil is after, we will see. 32. I love this one. Amen. How? Oh, he said 32. But I have prayed Amen. for thee Amen. that thy faith Fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. God has prayed for you. Amen. Whatever you are going through, God Almighty has prayed for you. Amen. But the revelation is in verse 32. There's one thing the devil was after. All he wanted to do was to, you know, those of us who are, I don't think they use these things nowadays, but... Um, Maybe locally from people from Africa who have a bit of experience when you are trying to make things like uh, everybody knows how Amala is made or things like Gari. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, those things are not as small and lovely like that. It goes through a sieving. You've got to sieve it. Mm -hmm. Then the pure things come out and then sometimes the chaff remains or sometimes it is the chaff that goes out. Sorry, it's the chaff that remains and the, the real substance comes out. Whatever happens, the devil tried to press Peter so that he, all oh, Peter, he will press him so hard, Peter will come out as chaff. What he was looking for was his faith. 
Can I just get faith out of everybody's life here? The devil eats faith for breakfast. That is the first thing he's looking for in the morning. Early in the morning. Oh, faith on sale. Faith on offer. Faith on a deal. He wants your most precious item, faith. That is why God said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Will I still find faith? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. There's a mystery about faith that has to do with our lives. Our whole lives. It says here, but without faith, Hebrews eleven six, it is impossible, impossible. And the devil knows this. So when he targets you, you see all the distraction happening in your life. The only thing he's trying to rob is your faith. Can I get faith out of this brother? Can I get faith out of this sister? That is his target. And so he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, you are finished. So what do you do when you don't have faith? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God I can guarantee you brethren if you decide to increase your faith by feeding on this word you will stand the test of time Amen. are you with me yes. but you know you know you know the enemy now you to check your record especially the the, um, the the lessons we are doing now to the human nature, this lesson is proper boring. Just take it like that. It's not one of those interesting lessons that you want to go into your Sunday school and start digging out, digging out, because there's no storyline to it. It's facts. It's history. It's ceremonies. But if you're not careful, he can rob you for the whole time these lessons are going on. I've been a victim. You just take all the beauty away. But may God deliver us. Amen. Look at what one man of God said, Charles Rodman. These are the people who, early when the apostolic faith started in Portland, early days, God saved this man to preserve some of the vital truths in the Bible. He was a holder of a doctorate degree in theology. But when he came to the apostolic faith, he wasn't saved, but he knew all the facts. And God took Charles Rodman changed him, saved him, and everything he had learned from Princeton University, God turned, turned all the Princeton University knowledge into a prince, a child of God. Amen. He was now able to dissect the book of Hebrews, all these lessons we are studying now, dissect them to the raw standard limit and you just need to listen to what he's saying. I'm going to read something that he said. This book, some of you might want to go and meet Sister Ogunshemi. There's a lovely library. You've got these things. We've got to fight for our lives. This word is getting old. It's getting dusted. We don't have the, you know, the appetite to get this sort of stuff. Our love is now for milk when we need strong meat. It's only the strong meat that will survive if the devil is going to, because listen, whether you saved, you're not saved, you are under attack. So if you are saved, be really saved. And be really feeding on correct food. Because even in the world, those who don't eat properly, any disease going around, they will catch it. You need something stronger than the ordinary. At first, when you start, I have to warn you, it will feel like, oh my days. It's just like when you eat the good food. Salad, 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 salad. No taste, no good. It is put this one, this smoothie, this vegetable, all this ginger, all this all that, that, that. chocolate. Oh, yes, I like that one. Snicker, mm, mm, mm. Oh, ice cream. Mm. But will you stand the test? Will you stand the test? If it's like that in this physical, it's more like that in the spiritual. Listen to what he said. The attentiveness with which we hear God's word and include it within our spiritual being has everything to do with our ability to withstand the onslaughts of the enemy. Our response to God's word. 
is what determines how we are able, going to be able to withstand the onslaughts of the enemy. He goes on to say this. <laughs> be one though. He says, to stand against the powers of darkness that are coming against us. If this, if it does not have that if effect upon us, we have lost the kernel of the whole thing. What is going to make us any different after 10 years in the gospel from what we were when we were first converted? Some people can be here for 10 years. They are no different from the day they came. They are still babies. Feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Feed me. No substance. No taking responsibility for your life. Forget about what your parents are telling you to do. Eat this word. Find for your own soul. Children, find solid devotionals that will help you be rooted in the world. If not, you will be swept away. Listen to the last sentence he says here. It is the, it, it says it is the strengthening and the building up of the word of God in your life. That's what makes you strong. He says, if you and I are better enabled to resist the onslaughts of the enemy today than we were 10 years ago, if we can withstand the assaults which at that time would have bowled us over and put us down, it is because the word has been incorporated into our being and has built us in faith. That is why it is essential to lay hold on it and not only to receive it with these physical ears, don't just listen, but to receive it down into our very heart. Amen. That is where the work will be done. Yes. And that is where the victory will be won. Amen. I can guarantee you, the devil sets up everything, only your faith. And I can tell you, the only way to resist him, because what is faith? It's a shield. So he's throwing darts at you. You block him. What are you using to block him? The word of God. When you don't have the word of God, you will compromise. And brethren, so many compromises in the world today. If you are not careful, if you listen to what's out there, it's so close to this gospel, but it's not. The experiences are so close to our own, but it's not. Mother Crawford staked her life on sanctification. She said, it's my best experience. She said, I would rather die a thousand deaths than give up on sanctification. Yeah. You know the reason why we were told in the Sunday school this morning, it cannot be faked. Yeah. Some of you say you have the spirit and no submission to authority. So what sort of spirit is that? When the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets and an elder is talking to you and you are like this. I know, de, 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 or your parents, yes, this, this, this. Whoa, whoa, where did that come from? The enemy would just take you and slaughter you. You finished. Then it is next. Who's next? May you not be a target for the enemy. Yeah. When God, Jesus Christ, told Simon this thing that you will be attacked, Simon, look at what Simon said. This is what some of us do. May God deliver us. Yeah. See what he says. Um, we're going back to Luke 22, 33. He said unto him, Luke 22, 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and into death. 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. This chapter has not even finished. Go to 61. This same Jesus, when they had snatched him from the disciples, he had an opportunity to look at Peter from afar. Their eyes met. Their eyes met. You know, they were taking Jesus. It was it, all, the, all the braggadocious stuff was gone. Now he saw himself as empty and stricken as he was. And he was following after. He wanted to, but he couldn't. And he says, 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out. And he wept bitterly. It pained him. It pained him. Yes. How many times you look, make a statistics of your life. 
how many times has this thing not happened to you? You thought you were ready. You thought you were prayed up. And something simple. Yes. Something simple. Would just, like I use the words in Nigeria, they would just quack you. Something small, just throw you off balance. Because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. Because even though he fell here, he did not utterly fall. Because you know why? It's back to that 32, but I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you. The devil has shot at you sore, but I prayed for you. The devil, he has hit your children so badly, but I have prayed for you. The devil has hit your husband so badly, you don't even think he's the person you want, but I prayed for you. The devil has hit your wife so badly, but I prayed for you. The devil has hit your job so badly, but I prayed for you. The devil has hit your finances so badly, but I have prayed for you. Oh, the glorious high priest. He settles everything before the time. He nips the problem in the bud. He knows your end from beginning. He told Simon Peter, he even predicted his fall. Because he said, when thou art converted. For you to be converted, that means you've fallen. And now you're back on your feet. So he was predicting this man. Look, let's see what Peter did to show you that there's hope. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Do you know what it was like that Peter did? Let's put it in contemporary terms today. He was using F word that he didn't know Jesus. Mm. He cursed. Mm. F you, I don't know him. F you, I don't know you. F, 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 until the cock. Then he remembers. He knows he's empty because at that time, no matter the relationship he had with Jesus at that time, you know it, you are empty. There was a time before I got married. The devil knew that he was waiting for me at the junction of marriage. For some of you, that's the area where the devil is waiting for you. You won't hear any other thing anybody is saying. Everybody will be warning you, e, that girl is a devil. Say, marry me, marry me. And you, please, say, give me that girl. Okay, she's yours now. What are you going to do? Oh, no, everybody is trying to say, that husband, that boy. That, that. <laughs> you, even the spirit is telling you, mm, I love him. Mm. It happened to Samson. And then when you get inside and you see the real picture, do you see that that thing that was a cat is a tiger? Mm. And then you are inside it for life. Mm. And you can't get out. But I want to tell you, even in that situation, it is not over. Amen. The worst situations God can turn it today. Yes. It is always darkest before the dawn. Yeah. I have seen situations that were beyond human comprehension, but God, when he enters onto the scene, he tells everybody, you are not the director. Mm. I like those directors when I'm dealing with this. Sh sh shut up, just keep quiet. I know what I'm doing. You, you just, you are, you are just, you're just a presenter. Look, I know the game. God knows the game. Yes. He knows your life. Yes. Look at what happens to Peter. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Because there is hope. Amen. Chapter 4, chapter 4, chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Woo, I love this part. You see this same Peter who was, who was shaking. Shaking. He could not stand. Eh? Uh, look at what happens here. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. He says, now when they saw the boldness, Amen. hey, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled yes. and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> he preached a sermon. 3,000 people also got saved. They could detect now that this person who was down, out, and buried, to Mano, to God, that was just the beginning of his life. Yeah. He was going to be a rock Amen. that the name Jesus gave him, Peter, you are a rock. You will stand and upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not stand. Amen. Amen. 
it will not stand against it. This same Peter has advice for you. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. He has advice because it is only those who are experienced that can advise. I'm telling you, if you don't, you see, he has been through it all. He has been hit by the devil, injured by the devil, hit by the devil. And now look at what he tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. He is now saying, be sober. <laughs> oh, be sober. You know what soberness is? Have a level head. Calm down. You know, one of my weaknesses, that is it. Like too much. Okay, you have passion, but you need controlled passion. Calm down. When you are too hey ho hey, the devil will strike you. You just calm down. Immediately, sometimes when I know I'm in the midst of the wrong people, I just calm down. Be quiet. Don't, that is not the, that's, that's, that's actually not the time to talk. Some of us, our problem is our mouth. Unnecessary talk. The person that you are not supposed to tell. You don't know when you have said, hey, say, so when they now call you, hey, sister, they said you said, I said, yes, you said it. Your mouth is like a, a, a leaking tap. That's your weakness. Everyone has one. Everyone has one. Look, it goes on. He says, be sober. Then also, be vigilant. Some of us don't, you can't see. And I'm not talking about physical sight here. You must pick things in the spirit. Something doesn't look right. Some of us, I like some young people. They can detect, mm, uncle, that don't feel right. You know, you just know something is not right. Mm, it, it, mm, there's some problem there. May God give all of us that spirit of discernment. It's a, it's a sign of maturity. It's a sign you are progressing. Not everything passes under you. You don't just look at everything. You don't just go everywhere. You don't just follow the crowd. Hey, we are going to this. We are going to what? You know, some of those films, they have some deadly spirits. By the time you open yourself, you are watching. You don't know how many have gone into you. You just come out. You can't sleep. Let, let's tell each other the truth. Be careful. Not all the books you read. Not all the sites you go on the internet. No. Just be careful. Be vigilant. Why? Finally, he says, because you are adversely the devil as a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking who he may devour. But nine, he's giving you the recipe. Whom resist? Steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Ten, wrap up. He says, but the God of all grace. Hallelujah. I love grace yes. because it is favor to those who are undeserving. Yeah. I love mercy because mercy is God's favor to the ill-deserving, mm. those who merit punishment. Mercy and grace will always be beside you. Yeah. You will never let mercy and grace. Yeah. May they always be near to you. Yeah. He, says, but the, he says, but the God of all grace, yeah. who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while. So don't be surprised now. You will suffer something. And some of you, you may, you may be saying this like, okay, okay, but that suffering they suffered here was um, because uh, they stood as Christians. I am the architect of my own storm. So? So? Whether you caused it or you didn't cause it, this promise is for you. Amen. How can you walk on this earth and part of the problem you are facing, you are not part of the contribution. We are flesh. May God deliver us. Amen. But the promise goes, he says that after you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect. Amen. He will establish you. Amen. He will strengthen you. Amen. And he will settle you in heaven. Amen. Are you ready to receive strength Amen. from God? Come. Pray. Plead. Cry. God has a blessing for you.
eternal Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for standing by us. Thank you that you will help us. Do more than we ask, for we pray in Jesus' name.